to listen to anything these degenerates say. Invest at your own risk, do research, but seriously don't listen to these ass clowns. Now enjoy Cash Daddies. And welcome to Cash Daddies. We are banking fatties. Yes, we are banking them, put in the bank. Here and they go, ching, ching. Uh, as always, they are burning up the internet. The ass to ass brothers are intergalactic icons. Please welcome Howie Dewey and Chris Snap. How are you guys? Good, brother. Good. Solid. Very, very good. And on the ones and twos, the, the, the young G, little E, Evan Hand. How are you, bro? How are you? I'm great, fellas. How are you? Did you get any ass yet from the show? No ass. I'm waiting on it. I'm waiting on them DMs. Coming. It's coming. And it is going to rain ass on you, brother. Uh, a lot of people enjoyed the last episode. Apparently, I sound like a... <laughs> Thank you, Chris Nath. <laughs> Greatly appreciated. Uh, <laughs> That Buddy, that's 20, you know what that is that's me holding that in for 20 years and yeah. just waiting for like the perfect moment to just who knew strike. who knew that you practiced this skill that would if one day rise buddy, buddy that's gonna that's gonna be what takes me to the, to the top i can't wait dude You're can you imagine me it. just being in vegas on fremont street with like a little <laughs> bucket a little change jar going who, who wants to see a Grabby <laughs> five dollars. I don't see it. Anyways, <laughs> guys, thank you guys for holding it down. You know, I really appreciate you guys, and uh, I'm glad everyone enjoyed the episode. And I'm glad everybody is enjoying the episode. If you really love Cash Daddies, please make sure to rate and review on iTunes. You know, uh, you know, helps us grow, and we're just. I have a feeling this show is going to stay in the top 200, hopefully for a long time. And if you keep leaving nice comments, keep giving us five stars, we will keep rocking, right? Correct? Howie, why are you quiet, bud? Absolutely, baby. I'm just sitting back. I'm like that potential energy that's about to turn kinetic, baby. I love that. I love that. So, guys, what's going on with the Discord? We're on street. People are talking about the Discord. We do officially have a Discord now. We have over 100, maybe 200 people in there. Um, I'm going to link that in the description. Um, we also have a Reddit if you want to uh, go and join that. That is r slash cash daddies. Go and join it. Um, go join the Discord. And, of course, subscribe. Follow us on social media at cash daddies pod. And that's all I got. Yeah, guys, I will be in New Jersey with my good friend, Howie Dewey. We will be at the Dojo and Comedy inside TIFFs. That will be March 4th, 5th, and 6th. Check that out. Then I'm going to be, this is going to be great. Guys, I got paid my first gig ever in crypto. It was a crypto pay Monero? for the gig. I'm going to be at Monero, brother. I Monero. <laughs> I know. Nice. Monero, dude. Nice. And uh, yep, it's the guys from float.com, F L O T E.com. And they have the float festival. Can you look this up real quick, Evan? It's uh, F L O T E festival.com. And I'll be there in Texas. Hopefully, it will be thawed by then. And uh, we'll see how it goes. So, those are the What is that? That sounds like some new age shit to me. Are they actual floaters? No, what? No, no, no. What it is? It's uh, it's like kind of this. Um, there's a big festival going on the same week in Mexico called Anarcapuco, and this is kind of its sister, uh, festival going on in LA. So it's good. They're running at the same time, and yeah, dude, it's all these crypto, all these crypto pirates put together. And if you look at uh, Float real quick, it's a really good website. They're trying to start like their own YouTube free, um. You know, no censor, no nothing. It's it's really great, and I love it, man. So that's where I'm going to be, guys. So let me find out the actual. I used to I used to I, buy my. I, I got it up right here. Oh, I 
Yeah, right? that's the festival. But I'm also there's a web. They have their own like YouTube channel. I gotta find it real quick. But come check me out. Those I have other shows. I'm gonna be in Kansas City. You can go to samtriplee.com and check those out. So guys, what do we want to get into, man? Crazy uh, week. How'd you guys bank it or what? Yeah, we always bank it. That goes without saying. Um, we're not we're not goddamn losers, you know. So I think <laughs> what we need to do is pick up um, from the GME hearings. Um, did you watch them at all, Sam? I watched tiny bits of them, clips here, clips there. But, you know, I'm really kind of over Washington, D.C., so I just decided i get a recap from the ass to ass. Dude, it was brutal. Maxine Waters just gets up there and wields that gavel, and she's like, yes or no? Yes or no? I, I yield your time. She's fucking brutal, and she, she doesn't even know what she's talking about. I was so frustrating to watch. And I know well, that – Go ahead. I'm Howard. pretty sure that kid from I'm pretty sure the kid from Robin Hood. I'm pretty sure he shit himself yep. during that situation. I'm pretty sure he shit all over himself because that kid looked like a fifth grader that got caught like with a thumb with his thumb up his ass in like the fourth row and then questioned by the teacher. That yeah, was well, bad. They're they're all trained by their counsel to not answer yes or no questions because they know it draws the time out because they're only allotted so much time. But after a while, I mean, I, yeah. I literally turned it off. Maxine Waters, she was just being a bitch. And it's yeah, like, she not, is, every, dude. not everything is a yes or no question. Okay. The, you know, let and the she guy- had no, I, she has no, you can tell by listening to her. She has no concept of None how of the market them do. works. No idea. None of them do, man. None of I don't them think do. The, I don't think the motherfucker from Robin Hood has any idea. That what kid you, was hilarious. What do you guys think this, how this is going to affect Robin Hood? Because obviously we're on Wall Street bets a lot and we're seeing people jumping ship. They claim they have 13 million members, you know, and this company, there's a lot of talk that Bill Ackman SPAC has been targeting Robin Hood as well as Coinbase. Um, what do you think is going to happen to Robin Hood now? I mean, it's, it's what it should company. happen It's people should abandon it. Yes. I mean, like, they dude. should abandon it. They should get rid of it. That's, that company should be bankrupt. In six months, but here's the 100%. problem. One hundred percent. Here's the problem. This kid somehow, uh, when they were about to shit the bed, uh, when they had to shut down, didn't allow any more buy orders. This kid somehow went out and scrounged up what, Chris, three, four billion dollars uh, in assets from other firms to keep his ass going. So, in my opinion, I mean, I don't see how. If they keep this name, they're going to be profitable. Going, who the fuck's going to use them? I mean, who's going to open up a new account at Robinhood? I, yeah, see, with- I disagree. I think I think the brand has so much value still, and I think it's <laughs> ripe for somebody to come in and just lowball them and just be like, "You guys shit the bed, but guess what? I'll buy you for seventy cents on the dollar of what you're worth, and I'll rebrand you." Keep in mind that target demographic they have they're they're little Z's generation. You know, they're young kids. They but there's a lot of places like that now. There's a lot of places like that. Yeah, I just think, dude, once a website takes a really bad, like, like this kind of level, I mean, like, let's look at Facebook, right? Facebook will always be huge because, you know, continents, like when you're looking down at South, uh, you know, South America, Europe, you know, Asia, they're always going to be on that. But in terms of the United States, Dude, who? I mean, there's not a lot going on on Facebook like it used to be. It's not the 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 sun it used to be. Same thing with Twitter, man. They're losing people left and right. So I believe that people could walk up and be like, okay, I I've heard of Robin Hood, but once they start doing some investigation, I, I don't think anyone's gonna put their money in there. Why would yeah. they do that when they got yeah. totally fucked? Because I they think already he- have the user base and they're going to see some losses and people jump and ship, but there's too much value on that brand. It's not going to go away. The only way Chris that would work. And I'll back you up on this. I think you're right under this situation. If a large uh, investment firm came in and bought them out and said, here's what we're doing. Number one, we're going to get rid of this ass clowns fire. He's gone. You got to get rid of that kid. He's got to go take the fall. I agree. He can never be part of that firm again. He's got to go and disappear and never see him again. And they'd have to come in, do a 360 degree saying, look, here's our new No, 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 no. You mean, you mean you need to go 180, right? You don't want to go with 360. You're right back where you are. Holy shit. Sam just That's called it. That's a good point. He's 100% <laughs> correct. 
Bro, did you go to analogy school over the weekend? That's a famous Jason Kidd quote where it's like, (laughs) we're going to turn this thing around 360 degrees. You're like, well, you'll be right back where you are. (laughs) I can't can't believe Tripoli just pulled some black belt geometric shit on me. Uh I wasn't paying attention. He fucking fired that. You should see him play pool. It's all those geometry classes that he actually showed up to. He is a fucking pool wizard. He just tossed... He just I'm tossed the um, On that subject you brought up about Facebook being garbage, I have always primarily used Facebook, and I'm using, you know, obviously IG and tw- uh, Twitter a lot more. But whenever I post the the Cash Daddy's Pod to Facebook, and I notice you have the same problem, Sam. There's like two likes on there, so I think their algo just doesn't let us show our shit because they're no, in with Google. And they don't want us, they don't want people sharing other hyperlinks. It's fucking We bullshit. also, dude, I mean, Ooh. like, I don't know what, like, if, I mean, because Cash Day is a brand new brand, so I don't know why they would already be like, hey, these kids, these little whippersnappers are up to no good, see, yeah? But I would be like, it could be something that, have you had any kind of history of arguing with people on Facebook? I have a history. I, they know who I am. <laughs> right. Uh, they, I am an outlaw in the fucking see me valley. Yeah, but this okay, is, <laughs> this is us posting under the cash dan- uh, daddy's YouTube, not just the the tinfoil hat. The point is, I can put something up there and nobody looks at it, and it's, it's got to be it's, an algorithm. It is, it is. I mean, I, I, I'm not, I don't do a lot on Facebook, but I'll post something and six people will see it, and then somebody else will DM me a month later, like, why didn't you tell me about that? I'd never got that. So yeah, yeah. dude. It's uh, it's kind of nuts what's going on out there. They just, you know, this whole thing with GME, Robin Hood, and all that stuff. This is like waking people up to, like, what investing's like and how there's like different levels to this shit. And I don't think they want people knowing that. I don't and think I'll tell you what. And, and stick it with GME. Here's what I want to know. Fucking little E did do a three sixty. It went all the way around. All of a sudden, he loves GMA tomorrow when when it opens up. Lily, why the oh, hell yeah. do you like GMA? No, tomorrow? no, no. I don't, I don't, I don't love it. I was considering buying calls on it, but <laughs> I mean, consider yourself yeah. f in the A if you're going to buy calls. Thank you for G- keeping oh, yeah. it Christian, F. Thank you. You're welcome. Deep, deep fucking value. Just oh, and through. then you go and then you do that just right yeah. after what Sam's, Sam said. Don't even. Okay. Well. DMV, he threw his nuts on the table on Friday and bought 50k more shares. So now Wall Street bets is going crazy. I think it'll go up a little bit. Okay, I think that's a smokescreen to say, look, I just bagged nine million dollars. I really believe in the stock. I wasn't doing yeah. anything wrong. E, exactly. Have you ever seen a procedural crime drama ever? Never. Okay, it's called covering your ass, man. <laughs> That's the only reason he said he bought 50000 You got to start doing some homework, Mine. start watching Law & Order Season 1. You have about a 1,000 seasons to go. <laughs> Don't come back until you know every single fucking storyline. And Mine. then I, I want you to go to NYPD Blue and do 1 through 12, and you skip the last two when they brought Caruso back because it's shit. No, you go to Law & Order. I'm in like seven of them. I'm always a cop. <laughs> I'm always a cop on the street just going... <laughs> oh damn oh man we gotta find those episodes dude those i'm in cool. a few i'm always walking by just like looking oh that's right people that's in the like, door that's like the one show that always tapes in new york dude i'm in like seven of them i'm in a, i'm in a, i'm a cop and every you know how many times i put on a nypd cop uniform and carried a fake gun around <laughs> holy shit Every time you're trying to rob a bank, yeah. Yeah, actually, I've thought about it. I've thought about it. <laughs> oh, my uh, God, dude. So, so, so I love the little E's going back in, dude. 500 Little E, call. not afraid, playing so, the game. Are you buying shares, E, or are you no, going to buy – I'm not going to do it. I, I'm gonna, I was just considering it, thinking about it, and then you tweeted at me and said, absolutely do not do that, so – well, now we're now that we're talking about GME, Chris, what do you yeah. think about this news on AMC uh, where Amazon's coming in and buying a chunk of the company? What's it? Because now they're all talking about, yeah, AMC's going to pop you know because what Amazon's going to buy him. You know what my response to that is? News to fucking me. So you tell the goddamn story. I didn't hear this. 
Yeah, I heard this. Uh, it was late Friday after the bell. Guys, breaking up. news real quick. I'm up 600 bucks on my fucking, <laughs> my stocks. On your yeah. what? On yeah, what? I'm up 600. On what stocks? 600 on that G, GMBLW. Oh, okay, hold on. Time out, time out. And I'm sorry to interrupt here, Howie. Howie, we'll get back to your very important story. I got, it. I got it ready, Chris. I got okay, it ready. Okay, so you only have GMBL? Yeah. Okay, so here's the problem. We recorded, I think it was episode seven on February 11th, and I said, I need you to buy ZKN, and you rocked back and forth, and you said, I'm going to buy that Zika virus dog. I'm in. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Let's listen. Let's listen. Let's listen. <laughs> so what are, you, what are you gonna buy tomorrow? I'm gonna buy this Zika virus. No, because you guys are in a text thread, and I'll be like, "What was that again?" <laughs> okay, so now uh, point. Oh, that's how you best. done? How you <laughs> done what I told you to fucking do? Be up 115% on that stock. Okay. Like all our, like, hold you on. You know what, dude? You're totally right. This and is I like should have done that. This is like that movie Copland. You said you wanted to be a cop. I gave you a chance <laughs> and you blew it. You blew, blew it. it. <laughs> you, you blew I it. I, so I get so nervous because you guys are there just 20. Uh, uh, buy, sell. And I'm like, dude, I'm little, I got twins at me. I'm like, I got worried about twins. <laughs> what are twins? About baby's mama. I got 47 podcasts to do. You guys are like, buy, sell, buy, sell. I'm like, I can't do this all the time. I need grandpa stock stock. What are you just, you just said you've got twins. What are those gay twinks? Is that something we don't know twins, about? Twins, twins, twins. I, twins. I, I heard it twins. G. You put a G twins, on that. twins, man. You oh, can roll the tape, boy. Roll the tape, you said twins. We'll run it back. Oh, Holy no, no, shit. So uh, here's the thing, man. We can't keep, here's the thing. I can only do what I do, but you have to help yourself. No okay? shit, man. Hey, okay. dog, don't worry about me. Don't worry about me. I'm killing this crypto shit. Don't worry about me. You guys yeah. are talking about $1,000. Daddy's doing fine. Don't worry about me, okay? I'm okay. doing fine. Oh, okay. So you're saying that your little crypto moves went up 100% in 10 days, like my Zeke and call did, 110%? No, but it went happened. up pretty fucking good. Give me I a had some ups, some downs, but dude, daddy's doing well. Okay, Don't so worry about that. Zeke and no Don't ups worry about daddy. Just rocket ships. <sighs> Bitcoin, hey, Bitcoin's up to, it's probably up 14, 15% in the last week, I'm going to guess. Oh, that's Tell cute. the cat man that. Tell the cat man that. Yeah, it's up nicely. Bitcoin's 14, up nicely. 14% a little bit. That's cute. That's cute. We did hey, 110% on I'm fucking Zinkin. 14% is good. I mean, it's no, all, we've been Howie, if 14% is cute if you, if you fuck up a smash and grab, you know, in a day, but... What, what, we, what did we do the other day? We did like 24, 25. You did 30 on that. We did 30. I did 20. I did 20,000? No, 26%, um, oh. 30% on a DN, DNMR option. No, this was crazy, Sam. This was crazy. So Chris and I went in and we bought calls on the stock DMNR on Wednesday. It was down to $44 uh, dollars a share. Well, it's moved a little up Thursday, but Friday, he texted me. He's like, what do we do with this thing? Because we're up like 20, 25, 20%. By the he way, called. I was dripping wet. I just gotten out of the shower. I didn't tell you that on the phone. I didn't he, want to creep you out. He calls me. And while, while we're on the phone, we're looking at it. And the stock goes from 49 and breaks through 50. The fucking options are up like 30%. And we sold right there. Made our money. And then it dropped back. So we might buy them again this week. We did leave a little money on the table because it jumped a buck the last five minutes. Well, but we were out of the trade with six minutes to go before the bell. And, you know, 30% on a three-day option swing, you got to be happy with that. Yeah, that's the, I was that's happy. I'm thing. happy. I'm and happy. we should bring this up because some Redditors, our, our Reddit board, which I didn't even know existed until three days ago, we got a guy on there who was like, God, we I We didn't think you, guys, you were ready for it. I, I'm still not. <laughs> I'm about to just start posting crazy shit on Reddit. So oh, the point gonna, is, gonna, Howie deep fucking throat. We Howie have people. We have people asking. Johnny hey, fuck man, rocks. 
Johnny Fuckcock. We got people asking, hey, what do you guys think of this option? Uh, can you explain, you know, Delta? Can you explain Theta? And the answer is this. Do not trade options until you've been studying or paper trading them for six months. They are complex financial tools. Yes, and I put, yes. And I put, yes, I want everybody to be healthy and wealthy, and I don't want you losing any money. I did put up a five post thread on Twitter explaining that it's, it's okay to be curious about options. Like if you're a buy guy only and you're getting curious, like you want to know about an option, you can be curious. <laughs> great but podcast. You are not, it's a great podcast. We are not ready. You are not ready to get into options. And case in point, Howie and I, we bought that option with a strike price of $50. And a guy on Reddit today is like, I'm going to buy the same option. And I said, well, wh what strike? And he said, $85. And I said, I think you're being a little, a little, um, you know, um, what's the word I'm looking Excitable. for? Howie? Excitable. Yeah. Um, you know, and he's like, well, what do you mean? And I was like, pull up an options calculator so you can see, so you can visualize what you need that stock to move up to, to make any money. And he's like, oh yeah, I mean, now I see it's got to go to 65 just to break even, you know, in two days. And I'm like, now you're getting it. So don't go off willy nilly buying lotto option calls without putting it into an option calculator after studying this for six months, maybe doing a little paper trading on the side. You're going to lose money if you, well, there is one rule in options and that's the first one's free. Uh, everybody seems to do well on their first option, but you just can't go off just jumping into options unless you have some background and you should be paying. Uh, you lose money fast. You'll lose a lot of money fast. And to st stay on this topic, options are extremely risky. And we had a, and I'll give you one thing that's a little more risky. We had a guy call in or actually wrote in. He said, explain to me, how do I trade wheat futures? And let me tell you, wheat futures times 10 is more riskier than options. I mean, when you start messing around with commodities, first of all, you got to have thousands of dollars. You got to have a ton of money to get the margin to buy the future contract. You got to study. If you're going to do it on your own, you better study that shit for years, or you better have a really good commodities broker. Because I know a guy. I know a guy that did it for like 20 years. He turned a hundred thousand dollars into like 2.7 million between a Monday and Thursday. The following Tuesday. He was sitting on the corner in Chicago. I had just down like a pint of vodka. It was trying to tackle a taxi. He literally had lost it all in like two days. Dude, futures are no joke. Futures are the quickest way you can lose money that there is in the market. So, man, I just say stay away from it. Yeah, there's an old saying. And by old saying, I just came up with it because I'm quick on my feet. The only way to beat the futures market is to invent a time machine. Yeah, it's true, man. It's no joke. Now, what and, I and want what, everybody to know is that, and I, 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 and this is like how amazing it is, is that Chris hasn't been trading forever. Like Chris is like kind of got into this in the last year and has gone really hard to it, into it. So it is possible to do that. You just got to take your time and not be rushing in and, you know, just throwing all of your money into one thing because no. if it goes bad and like. It can go bad. Uh, yeah. You're going to be shit out of luck, man. And it's just yeah. like you got to take your time. When you hear work, like if you're brand new to this, you're just like me. I'm learning all this as we go. You got to write down the things you don't know and then spend some time looking on the internet, going to YouTube, trying to find things that explain to you what each one of these things do. Because what you're going to try to do is you're going to try to use logic when it comes to stocks. And I think right there is how you shoot yourself in the foot. What you got to think is, how can this make me as much money as possible? That is what stocks run on. It is not logical. It is, how can I make money off this, right? Shorting, puts, they don't make a lot of sense if you're coming from a logical point of view. It takes a little time to understand what these things are. Sam, yes. what you just said was the key, the key. Don't ever use logic. Don't use <clears throat> loyalty. Don't get, don't get sucked into a stock because you're like, my grandfather worked there. My uncle worked there. It paid for my college. It's a beautiful company. And then for five years later, the fucking company's bankrupt. Don't fall in love with it. It doesn't make sense. Nothing's logical. 
you got to look at how a stock's trading. If the volume's going up on it, does the stock have decent fundamentals? Are you in for the short term, the long term? There's a lot of different fucking variables. And, and like Sam just said, it's not logical, baby. It's Nothing not makes logical. sense. It, it is. doesn't make sense because it's nope. been over years honed and honed and like really smart cutthroat psychopaths have tried to figure out ways to make money. Yeah. And it's not, it's not touch, but dude, it's like, dude, it's like grown man shit. Yeah. And yeah. The other thing is like with options, like the way I tell people like what options are, it's like having a baby. And you can't leave the baby unattended. You can't rush into the store for a quart of milk and leave that option and sitting in the back seat, you know, you because you come you out five minutes later. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, you could. Really? You, I, mean, I left my kid. I left, by the way, I left my kid at the mall one time, but I went back an hour later. He was still there. They demand constant attention is the point. <laughs> they uh, really do. Yeah, oh, man. especially if you're playing short-term options. Yeah. Um, so yeah, True. solid advice, Sam. That's definitely the best thing I've heard you say on the show. Yeah, yeah, that was good. I don't yeah. know. I don't know. You guys know I made a super cut where I explained fucking put options and and uh, shorting. You know that, right? So yeah. I have said some smart shit before. <laughs> yeah, you you look, look like a genius. You didn't Thank make you. shit. That guy did, and he cut it in. He made you look really good. Okay, something's getting <laughs> sensitive all of a sudden. So uh, I don't know if you know this, but we have had. Um, we have had uh, people who've come on the show. We've, we've had two guests on the show, right? Two guests. Both of them have made public statements about the power of this show. Both of them have said, and I'll, I'll read this, what Tim just said to us. Tim Pichette was our Bitcoin guy. And he goes, Ronan, you got, he goes, Ronan, that's my name on um, Telegram. <laughs> If you guys retired Cash Daddies, it would have the best track record of any financial show ever. That's from a financial guy. And then Brenton, who was our, our, our DraftKings guy, went on there and goes, the advice is real. Neff, you want to say what he, what he, what exactly broke down? Because we were talking about it a little bit. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, he, he balled out. I mean, he straight up said, I, I took your advice and bought $10,000 in ZKIN. I'm up, you know, 100%. And um, keep them coming. And Brenton, thank you for that shout out. I wish I had the money to throw down like you do on one, one stock. Uh, but it does mean a lot. And, and, and to our readers, they've been phenomenal as well. We got guys posting <laughs> big positions on ZKIN. Um, and it, yeah, like I said, and I, I say this every time somebody asks me about a stock, I say, I'm on a hot streak. It will end at some point. So know that um, I'm on a heater and it will end at some point. Yeah. I think but we're still going to make money. We're still going to make coin. We're going to find a way. That's the one thing we talk about. There's, there's, if the market's tanking, there's still ways you can make money, baby. There's still ways you can make money. Yeah, there's always going to be stocks that are going up, even in, on, you know, in bear markets. There's always going to be stocks that are going down uh, in the reverse. So, you know, it's such a hack, cliched line, but Kramer says it, and it's true. There's always a bull market somewhere. So um, that's what our job is. And that's why we do the work. That's why we read four to six hours a, a day trying to find a new pick to play. So, so that's what we do. We live for this. So, you know, this is going to be an interesting episode because, you know, one of the reasons. So, you know, the show started where like I, I, was, tell, I was talking to Howie about doing a podcast and then we, I would start telling him about crypto and then he started giving me stock advice. And I was like, dude, that's the podcast. And then I'm like, fuck, I got to get on that podcast. And, you know, Cache started and Evan jumped on and then Chris jumped on and here we are. But, you know, a big part of I wanted to start this podcast was that I wanted to help internet rich people make money. So one of the people we're going to have on today, and lo and behold, they flaked on me, was an OnlyFans model. And I still want to kind of go into something with them because I know there's people who are listening right now. Before we get our picks of the week that we like to drop, um, I'd like to kind of get into some advice maybe we're going to give her, which is like, let's talk to our listeners who are kind of new about IRAs 
and, and what those are about and what are some simple little things they could get into to start investing their money so they could just get the ball rolling. Well, yeah, the, I mean, what I would have told her is the first thing, you know, if she doesn't, we've talked about it before. Most important thing you can do, if you're under the age of 40, open up a Roth IRA. Open up a Roth IRA, max that thing out every year. I think it's, what, $6,000 a year. Uh, max it out uh, and invest in mutual funds within the IRA. Okay, look, what are mutual funds? All right, here, here's what mutual funds are. And, and what they are, the only good time to invest in a mutual fund is if it's within a tax-deferred device, what, which is an IRA or an annuity. You would not want to buy a mutual fund outside of an IRA because they trade too many stocks within that mutual fund and you, have, you would have a tax penalty. Within the, within the IRA, you're not going to have any tax penalty. So here's what a mutual fund is. It's a basket of stocks, usually oh, hundreds, nice. hundreds or even thousands of stocks within the fund, which is actively managed by a fund manager. Um, and you have thousands of different types of funds. Within your IRA, you can have, uh, you can have a Fidelity Growth Fund or a Grant Janus Growth Fund. You could have a Morgan Stanley Value Fund. Uh, you could have a Gold Fund uh, to take care of your, your metals. You now, can do have you a, pick those? Or does or or you go to your guy who's managing your guy or your lady that is yeah. managing your fund, and you go, hey, manage this for me. And he's like, okay, I'm gonna put you in this. I'm gonna put you in this. Yeah. Or does he give you a list of options that you should do? That's a great ex That's a great question. You know, you I'm should just fire today. Start off. Starting off new, you should go to somebody that knows what they're doing, because what they're gonna do is they're gonna look at your age, which is gonna tell them that your risk tolerance. And then they're going to try to put you into a portfolio using the method, which we call modern portfolio theory. What that is, modern portfolio theory is, look, here's your age, you're 25, you're young, you got a high risk tolerance. So we're going to put you in probably 90% stocks and equities and maybe 10% fixed income, which are bonds or just cash. So in other words, she's going to diversify your portfolio up and have you in maybe five or six growth funds, uh, three or four value funds, which are high dividend paying uh, funds, stocks within the fund. And he's gonna, and, and you're gonna ro ride that out unless he makes a change. If, if the market starts to drop and tech stocks start getting crushed, he may pull you out of some of those growth funds and put you into something a little safer until he feels the market's gonna go back up. But it's a good way, you're not gonna get smashed. You're gonna get, you're gonna be diversified if you're 25 years old and you can hit between seven and 15% a year for the next uh, 30, 35 years, you can be a millionaire. It's that yeah. simple. The point is, the point is it beats the 0.06% you're going to get going to your bank and putting your money there. And people forget that we used to draw interest from checking and savings accounts. That's gone. It doesn't exist. And one thing I do want to add to Howie's point is, the first decision you make when you open an IRA is do you want a Roth or do you want a traditional? The, the major what difference, the difference? Okay. The major difference is, is a Roth, you don't deduct, deduct tax right up front. So, but the flip is when you withdraw, you don't pay taxes on it. With a traditional, you can take a tax deduction up to I think 5,500 or 6K on it. 6K. Yeah. yeah, but then you pay the taxes on the back end. So if you're young, just put it, I mean, that's why I'm pro to traditional versus Roth. You, if you put it in a traditional, you're going to get that immediate tax break that you can write off year on a yearly basis up to there's an actual, there's an actual IRA calculator. And if you go to a financial advisor, they'll show you. And basically it's age. And I want to say, I'm throwing out there. I think it's either, it's more beneficial. It's more oh. beneficial up to the age of like 44, 45, 46 to keep it in a Roth. But if you're opening an IRA and you're in your 40s, mid 40s, they're probably going to tell you to open a traditional so that you can write that off. It just, it just, an accountant will explain it to you. So you, where should we go to uh, an investment firm? Is that what you do? You go, or do, do I go to Chase Bank and do that? And does my IRA possibly take a beating if the market crashes? Your I, here's the thing. Your IRA is good. If the market crashes, your IRA is going to take a hit because you're in stocks, you're in equities. But the one thing that advisor is going to do, you're never going to be in 100% equities. 
you're always going to have the way, and this is modern portfolio theory. Uh, they're going to say, look, Sam, uh, we think you should be in 50% growth stocks, 20% value, uh, 10%, 15% Bitcoin, 10% gold, and the, rest, uh, and the rest in cash. They're going to throw you something like that at you so that if the market drops 30%, we all know that, that Bitcoin and gold are probably going to go up. Or if you had commodities in there, which is a managed futures mutual fund, that's probably going to go up. So they kind of offset. So instead of losing 25% like the market, you may only lose 9 or 10%. And that's why you want to be diversified. And I think you said that earlier. Yeah. And keep in mind, the, you put your money in an IRA, it, you can't take it out until you're 59 and a half without a penalty. Right. So Unless you're, the, I think. I think if you're buying a first time owner house or something. Yeah, I did like that, that actually. I did that. Yeah. I, borrowed, I borrowed 10K against my IRA uh, without a penalty, right. to put it towards a down payment on my home. So that's the yeah. other big benefit. It's like you borrow, you're borrowing from yourself and you just, you know, you, you're, not getting, you're not getting charged. So, yeah. or if you, you have like, like that. yeah, that's. Go to Charles Schwab for this or go to Chase Bank. Which yeah, one? Yeah. I would go to Charles Schwab. I wouldn't go to a fucking bank. No, I mean, nothing bank. against a bank, but you go to Chase Bank, you don't I know who the hell is. Yeah, 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 I hate banks. Uh, <laughs> but, but you go to a bank, you don't know. I mean, you're going to get fucking Mary Jane Ratcratch telling you to put money in the fucking... Oh, is that she Johnny is. Fuck Rocks? Is yeah. that Mary, Mary Jane Crotchrod? Is she yeah. their good... Uh, transsexual aunt. Yeah. <laughs> no, Mary Jane, Mary Jane Crotchrod, she's going to be telling you like, yeah, put it, put it all here and you know, pays 3% annually, go to a Charlie Schwab, uh, go to an E-Trade, go to uh, any one of those places and, and talk to somebody who is a registered rep, somebody that has their Series 7, 66, 65, 31, uh, manage all that stuff. Talk to them and they'll sit down and, and you just say, look, I want to be diversified. And they'll be like, OK, here's what we got. They'll put you in like six, seven different funds. Uh, they'll put you in some fixed stuff. They'll put you in your Bitcoin. Your, they'll put you in your commodities, your gold, your treasuries. That They'll make sure you're all set. And keep in mind, you can trade within your IRA. Uh, you can't yes. put options, to my knowledge. I think you can make covered calls. But no. you, can't, you, you can't make a covered call on your options? I don't know about that. You can't buy options. I but mean, you, yeah, you definitely can't just go in there and be like, oh, I'm going to start smashing and grabbing. You know, you, I don't know if you can buy a covered call. Maybe you can. Maybe you can. Oh, I, I, I don't know. What? A covered call. Okay. Um, but yeah. you can buy ETFs. You can buy you can buy just about anything. You can buy Bitcoin in the IRA. Um, but I like, didn't know I that. Say, it, yeah, you can. Oh, you mean like the the like BTC, like uh, the like grayscale shit, like that. You can't buy yeah, actual that, Bitcoin. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, but but my point is, if you haven't been trade, if you if you're not if you're a rookie, if you haven't been doing this five ten years. If, if have somebody and, and, and always, here's the most important thing. Always look at your statements. You're going to get a, every, you're going to get a uh, statement every month. Look at the statement, compare it to what the market's doing yeah. to make sure that you're on the right path. Talk with other people. Find That's out. literally what got me into the market because I looked at my 401k when I had a job over the years and then I've been self-employed for 13 years. And I, 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 I looked at this IRA and uh, I compared it to my 401k and I'm like, oh, and I, and I have a broker that handles my IRA and his returns were so much significant compared to a 401k because my 401k had me in like bonds that had yeah. these garbage yields. And I had no idea for like 10 years when I was a working stiff that yeah. I was in this crap product that was sold to me as this is what you need to do at this age. And it wasn't- That's crazy. Enough. I mean, I could understand it five or 10% of it was in bonds but if some and, and i've seen fuck ups do this stuff man i mean i used to see guys that would put young kids and here you need to have half stocks half bonds i gotta oh, say something man. real quick i'm sorry to interrupt howie yet again second time will never happen again i fucked up i accidentally told the only fans girl 7 p.m and i put 7 p.m <laughs> eastern so i messed up so i'm gonna see if she can come back on but or we could do it another time so I'm waiting to see. Yeah, so cool. full disclosure, that was my fuck up. And I'm sorry about that. Howie, I where should she, not- Where she you. live? She lives in New York? She lives uh, on, she lives um, not, not on the East Coast, Midwest. <laughs> oh, okay. 
All know? right. You know, and that's here's another thing I would ask her. And and because you know, we talk about the first most important thing you want to do is open up a Roth IRA or a traditional. But if if I don't know, I hear some of these OnlyFans chicks are making 10, 20, 30 That's G why a I month. want to have her on. She says she needs a couple minutes to you know put the face back on. Do you guys want yeah. to do that? Yeah, sure. Sure. Okay. Because we can Perfect. talk to her about Seth and Let's Seth, know. I'm gonna Seth send IRA. you her uh I'm gonna send you um her her hers uh okay. So, so you what guys keep talking. What are fans girls doing? Just grabbing the cash, putting it under the mattress? That's what I'm saying. So like, I want to get into a why, but the reason I've always, so when I went to UNLV, man, I went to college just because my parents wanted me to go to college. That's the only reason I went. I didn't you went really to care. UNLV. <laughs> so I go to UNLV, I get a degree in psychology because I like the movie uh, Silence of the Lambs, okay? And Basic Instincts. So I'm like, I want to fuck with people's heads. So I'm going to do that, right? So I get the degree. I only want to do stand-up. It's the only thing I've ever wanted to do in my life. So... I said, you know what? While I'm doing stand up, I'm going to get a, a gig at a strip bar. And I went to um, Deja Vu Showgirls. And, Classy joint. Hey, dude, let me tell you something. I was in Vegas back. This was, I'm so old. I was in back. Uh, I was back when you could just hang out at a strip bar and the girls would just kick it with you, right? But you know what changed it? The movie Showgirls, right? The movie Showgirls happens. Every girl sees like strip bars in Vegas and they all the sharks come to Vegas. They just come to Vegas and it was just chaos, right? But I get the shop. And it was one of my uh it was one of my favorite gigs because it was the first time, I mean, besides seeing naked women all the time, it was everybody just worked there, just wanted to make a dollar. Nobody was slitting each other's throat to get ahead. It was like, let's just make a dollar. We're what all were cool. You doing? Let's make Parking a cars? No, dude. I was like, I was like, dude, I, I was, uh, I ran cash register. I did a little bartending and then I did some security and there was a guy and me and this dude named T and he was like the biggest black dude I'd ever seen in my life. I used to call him deep space. That's how big he was. Right. And it was just me and him. And, uh, it was so funny. One time this group of drunk Mexican guys came, these fucking straight up cholos came in. Right. And they were in my face. They're like, fuck you, white boy. You fucking white boy. Fuck you. And I'm like, hey, dude, just keep it chill. We're here to have a good time. He goes, I'll fuck you up. And so I go, if you fuck with me, you got to fuck with him too. And he looked over and he saw T, right? And they looked at T and he looked back to me. He's like, fuck you, white boy. You know, because he didn't want to fuck with T. But anyway, so when I would be at this club, these clubs, I would watch these girls walk out with just money bags like they just robbed a bank man i mean they would just walk out with cash and then not like they would just have to take a taxi to work they were just blowing through this cash you go out to eat with them they'd order a ten dollar sandwich they give a thirty dollar tip they were just blowing the cash and i was like if you really want to make money become the financial consultant to the uh to the strippers you just invest their money you could make so much cash with them. So I see these girls doing OnlyFans. You hear the story about, you know, they're buying houses. And you're like, some of them are investing it, but I bet you a lot of them aren't. Yeah. And it's like, if you have this money coming in, it's time to fucking invest. So Absolutely. We're, we're starting a cash daddy's stripper hedge fund. Is that what you're saying? Because <laughs> I'm in. Was, Let's do it. If they will let awesome. us do it. I would tell you that would be the most boss move ever, dude. First Let's of all, I'm going to tell you right now, by, by law, Chris, we could easily start a hedge fund. That would I not think be we, hard. What do you mean start? I think we just did. No, we, we – well, I'll get the paperwork because it's very easy to do. You don't even need lights. You don't need shit. That's why the hedge funds are so crooked. <laughs> dude, I'm telling you. My, my buddy, a buddy of mine named Steve, uh, he, used to, he used to do investments. He would just – show up blown out of, on coke and he was just like he's talking to these girls he's like what are you guys doing to invest would you invest and they were just like invest our money please but he was so blown out they couldn't remember what he had pitched before so i'm like let's do it dude i mean like that's straight cash bro i i'm a 10 minute walk from wall street i'll go down and get the paperwork we'll get a hedge fund started there's cash a camp. There's this girl on uh, on OnlyFans who's also a celebrity, Bella Thorne. Um, she made one million dollars 
in a single day. On but you know she fucked them, right? Yes, she fucked yes, them over. Yes. I'm gonna send you her email. All Who right. Bella's? Yeah. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So she she told everybody that she would go, you know, full blown, no censor, whatever, if they donated, you know, hundred, however many hundreds of dollars. So, so she, she basically said she was gonna show open broccoli, and she didn't do what she said. Exactly, and people, oh. she made a she made a million in a day, and all these horny old white dudes are just, you know, giving her three hundred bucks, and nothing. It's like snapping she made up a to million. A... She made a million dollars for just saying she. And she that. was like, "I'm so sorry." They do. They hate her. These guys ended up snapping off to a Sears catalog. That's fucking terrible. <laughs> That's not good for anybody. That's not good for anybody's self esteem. Um, while we're waiting, Sam, uh, do you mind if we um, check your picks because you missed last week's episode and we didn't get to get an update on your picks, which, according to what I wrote down are mana and uh dnt and then oxtail was that yeah. what it was called yeah so they didn't grow a lot i'm gonna be honest with you they didn't grow oh, a lot so they didn't go up well no they did go originally go up and then this yesterday they went back down a little bit but i'm yeah. telling you man and i'm gonna get into my pick at when we start doing picks i just sent you the email uh i got her it. email i got it um i'm telling you dude these investments, I'm saying, aren't these smash and grab coins? They're like invest now, and then they're gonna grow. Like I just bought this. I'm gonna get into later. This one I just so, bought so went up a dollar in a couple of weeks. So you're down on your picks? No, I'm not down on my picks. <laughs> I'm not down at all. I feel mentally really good. he's not down. Mentally he's pumped hey, up. Mentally. Hey, Lil E, I know you're dealing with some Zoom invites, but can we pull up the mana chart and the oxtail? Yeah. Look at you. You got your arms crossed. You're just <laughs> do it. Does, dude. It's not meant to be. It's like, dude, I told you what it is. It's a yeah. It's like where are we gonna be in a year? Well, where are we yeah, gonna be? I don't in know if you noticed, but this is a financial advisory show. Yeah. <laughs> Sam, yeah, but I, to Sam's credit, he's about the long-term investment, man. It's not right. thank you, he's Howie. The, he's the long-term voice guy. of reason on the show. We All just right. can't well, up on a weekly basis. Well, keep in mind that show, you know, was a does that say 32 uh, cents? 36 cents. Well, it's 32 right now, 36 at the high. So over that's the week. one week chart. Yeah. So there's a month. Now, well, looks like he missed the boat on that, didn't he? Um, can you just go back to the week so we kind of have something to compare it to? So no, look, bro, you're what is this one, mana? Actually, actually, looking at that chart, I would probably buy that right now. Dude, I'm that telling looks, you guys, this is what I'm talking about, and I'm gonna get into my if you my look if you, if you look at that chart, <laughs> if, you, if you look at the chart, the chart definitely from uh, that chart's dog shit. No, that weekly for no chart it's, shit. It's got higher lows. It's definitely got higher See, lows. Dude, the problem is, you guys, I keep telling you, you're looking at the shit like stocks. It's not how stocks operate. Dogecoin, Dogecoin, Dogecoin. Okay? That is a smash and grab coin. Smash and grab it all day. <laughs> Watch it. Wait till Eli Musk fucking ass. Okay. Neuralink okay. ass tweets about it. It will shoot up. Sell. Then you okay. wait for it to crash. So these are my dude. When I make my investments, like buy and hold for a while. I don't I know like if you chart. noticed, but I, I like I, that chart. I, I'm not happy with Elon Musk tweeting every eight seconds about Bitcoin because I believe he's manipulating the market. And he 100% uh, is. Uh, and he did so, that Dogecoin to right. fuck with people. Okay. Because he's today, like, look at the peasant stance. Okay. But here's the point he buys a, a billion and a half dollars <laughs> in Bitcoin. He buys a billion and a half dollars in Bitcoin, what, two weeks ago? I don't know when they disclosed. And then it goes up. Mm-hmm. And, then he, and then he tweets out today Bitcoin's overpriced. Okay. So here's my question there's no law, it's not regulated. Is anybody going to rein somebody like him in and say, you're fucking this up for all of us, man? Or, I mean, is there, because there, there can't be any oversight, right? I, 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 that's a great question. I, again, like you guys are applying stock market rules to a brand new, brand okay. new. But that's not entirely true. He, as a CEO of Tesla, has an obligation 
to not only as shareholders, but anybody that's associated with Tesla. And if he's buying crypto and manipulating the market to um, uh, increase the value of his company, that how we how is that a not an SEC violation to some degree? He's gotten slapped before. I mean, I think what well, a year or two ago, didn't he get fined? Was it ten million for media manipulation? Because remember, I think a year yeah. ago he tweeted he got fined ten mil. Yeah. No, he's so my, a, he's a fucking dumb. He does stupid shit like this. So my question, all the twenty nine million. Oh no, sorry, twenty million. So will twenty the SEC, million? Yeah, he got fined. Will, will the SEC put a stop to this because he didn't buy it personally? His fucking company bought it. Well. Yeah, I mean that's that's totally different too. Now, man. Okay, so now we're getting into that for sure. I think that <laughs> could be a violation. Well, yeah, if you're if you're a stockholder and you own part of his company and he's buying this, I mean, and it's not in the prospectus because you know when you buy a stock, you get a prospectus. That prospectus says this is our company. These this is our uh, philosophy. This is what we invest in. And if he starts going away from that, then people are going to start selling the stock. He just yeah. bought it. Our guest is here. Oh, please bring her in. Hi. Please welcome to the show. She an, has an OnlyFans account. Please welcome Bean Crunch Wop Supreme. Bean. <laughs> How are you, Bean? I'm great. How are you doing? This is fun already. Thank you, Thank you for joining us. You're on Cash Daddies. You're, you're making history. You're the first female guest ever on this podcast congratulations here there we go i'm nope. gonna change my wi-fi that'll help okay there we go look at that someone finally i mean dude could you we're gonna teach you about finances maybe you can teach howie about how to use the internet that i don't know how to use the internet how do you how are you on only fans you don't know how to use the internet but then again i don't know how to use the internet so maybe who am i talking about <laughs> being real quick if you could do you mind yes. telling us a little bit about you and your OnlyFans account. How you got into oh. it and all that stuff. Well, really how I got into it is through, uh, you met her through Lainey, who is my partner. And um, really it was for buying ingredients for culinary school, because I am in culinary school, but like I, <laughs> that's really all that I use the money for until it actually turned out to be a little bit lucrative. And I'm like, oh, I can do more things with this. So that was pretty fun. Uh, Lainey is uh, your your boyfriend who is trans that loves conspiracies and listens yeah. to uh, Tinfall Hat. So you know, we just there's like there's a lot of Kevin Bacon <laughs> in that right there. Okay, but so you are on OnlyFans, and yes. for those who might not know what OnlyFans is, can you tell our listeners? And by uh, those who might not know, we're talking about Howie. Can you please explain what <laughs> OnlyFans is? <laughs> Okay, well, it is a platform where you can upload anything that you want, but mine personally has to be images of myself with not a lot on. <laughs> oh, yeah. I love that. <laughs> I love yeah, that. I can, uh, I can see that. It's basically yeah. Patreon for pornography. Would you agree on that? Yeah, that's what it is. That's what it is. It's pretty fun, though. <laughs> so are so these what, all still uh, video or pictures or are there actual videos? Oh, there's videos for sure. For sure. I have a lot of videos. Oh, okay. All right. Are okay. there different levels? Like, like say I want to join your OnlyFans. Is there, okay, you, you get the pictures for $4.99. Yeah, there's $9. like $5, $20. Yeah. One. What, what well, are the no, different that's, levels? There is, it's not like Patreon in that sense because there are no different levels. Like as soon as you're subscribed, you pretty much get everything that I put on my page unless I make like a specific thing pay-per-view. And then you have to, you know, spend the 15 or the $20 to open that message, which is usually like a super long video. That's the only time I ever do pay-per-view. But other than that, it's a one-time subscription of only $9.99. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> but, there are, but there are other models that do have subscription levels, right? You can have that option. You choose not to, right? Yeah, well, some people, um, they have a free one and then everything that they put on is pay-per-view. So that's different. But like, you know, you got somebody like, you know, trash-ass Bella Thorne who went and made hers 
forever expensive and we were just we talking, were just about, talking that. about it <laughs> just talk, can you please tell us the bella thorne situation that a lot what? of the only fans are upset about only fan models are upset about well what she did was she she made us have a cap because she promised this amazing only fans and she like sent out this pay-per-view image of herself, but it was just her in a bikini. She wasn't even naked. So she charged like an unreasonable amount of money just to open this image. And then everybody was pissed off and emailed OnlyFans like, hey, we want our money back because we thought she was gonna be naked and here she's just in a bikini. So that that ended up coming back on all of us so that we can only charge a certain amount for every pay-per-view message now. And that was her fault. So her false advertising screwed everybody. <laughs> Oh, yeah, okay. really, it did. Yeah, so I'm quick not a question, fan of her. Quick question, Bean. Can you raise your hand? Do you have a pentagram on your hand? No, it's an eye. Oh, I thought you were going after that, like, mm -hmm. uh, serial killer Richard Ramirez, you know, market for a oh, second. Man. Don't even get me started on that <laughs> stuff. I'm reading, no, I'm reading the Charles that. Manson book right now about what really went down crazy. Different show. But before we start, Bean, <laughs> tell them your... What is, how can they find you on OnlyFans? Cause uh, there's going to be some, you're going to get a little traffic off this. So. Oh, well, that's <laughs> fine. Well, my Twitter and my OnlyFans is the same. It's all one word. What she eat. You can look me up. I have a lot of fun on there. Come what, she fun. Eats? what she eats. And now is that with a Z or an S eats Z? It's or just S? neither. It's just what she eat. I got okay. It. Done. All right. I'm illiterate. Okay. So. <laughs> This is a this is an investment show, Bean. Can you tell us a little bit about? We don't want. I don't need. We don't need to know your personal stuff in terms of how much money you're making. But what what is like? So you're you, you obviously already said, hey man, I'm making some money. It's getting a little lucrative here. Yeah. Do you have a history of investing? I do not. Not, not at, at all. all. No. Question. So Question. Would you like to join our OnlyFans hedge fund and start making some serious money? Yes, I would. <laughs> okay, case in point, that's how you close the deal, all right? Okay. That's how you get it done. Okay, Catman, nobody's trying to close deals here. We're having the way, talks, we, okay? Want to introduce us so she knows our names if I'm going to be doing business with her and okay. making her money? I don't know the order, but the, the guy who looks like he's transitioning, that's Chris Naff and he owns cats. Hey, and he's been one of my best friends for a very long time. The young G here, little E, that's Evan Hands. He's uh, 22, but you know, yeah, he's a good guy. And then at the top is the man, the myth, the legend. That is Howie Dewey. And I think you might know me. My name's Hi. Sam Tripler. So hey. thank you for coming. I do show. know you. So, Hi, so, thank you for having me. This is exciting. Yeah, by well, the way, we're excited to have you on. And I'm sorry for the confusion earlier, man. My apologies. So, yeah. Oh, no, we don't were, worry about that yet. What we're basically, we started this podcast because we want it to be educational. And we realized that we're at the dawn of an investing revolution. And there's a lot of people out there uh, doing gig economy work uh, like yourself. I think I could, you know, safely classify it as a gig economy to a certain degree. And we're curious to know, you know, what, what you're doing with your money. Um, are you putting it into an IRA? Are you putting into stocks? Are you buying Bitcoin? Because there's so many choices these days. And we realize the information isn't out there for most people. And that's kind of why we're here. So do you have, do you, where are you putting your money right now? And by the way, if any of this is too intrusive, feel free to say, I'm, I, I'm not comfortable sharing that. Information. Oh, Okay, I'm I make porn, so intrusive. <laughs> like <laughs> that should be on a t-shirt. I make porn. There you I go, open. Chrissy. There you go. By the way, Bean. All time, bring way, it up. By the way, Bean, did you lose your pants? <laughs> no, they're on. I oh, they are. On. Okay, okay. I wasn't sure. <laughs> so, so, so I love this. So, oh. so no investing's going on right now. None. Oh, I everything goes to savings though. At least I'm like trying not to frivolously spend. I gave that up for Lent, but like for now. <laughs> hey, so but yeah, it's just going to uh, savings. Here's a question. Bank? Yeah, yeah, but in the bank. Here's 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 a big oh, question. Everybody's big, talking once. Go go on. Big now. question is this: How long? How long have you been doing this? And are you getting paid weekly? Yeah, I've been doing. I started. I'm almost at my one year anniversary. Okay. So I've been doing this for about a year. This and Sex okay. Panther, yeah. 
All right, now, do you, you know, now, do you what? get paid, like on Patreon, you get paid at the end of the month? Do you get paid at the end of the month, or is it on a weekly terms weekly. with OnlyFans? You can do um, either manual payouts or bi-weekly payouts. I do manual, just like as soon as it hits, like, you have to have a minimum of like $20, because it takes, after somebody like tips you or subscribes to you, it takes seven days for you to be able to withdraw it. So you have to wait for that amount to come in and... Yeah, I usually just wait until it's like a couple hundred dollars and then I'll withdraw. So let me ask you this. Have you, I mean, on a monthly basis, are you making, are you making five figures? I, I, yeah, Probably. I, mean, I don't want to get too much into her actual finances. Because no, because this is going to have a huge, this, this look. No, I'm, I'm saying this because this is the difference in starting from base one, whether or not you're going to open a Roth IRA or a business IRA, like a SEP. That's the reason let, I'm asking. Let, let Big Daddy work his magic. Okay, right, okay. I just didn't want to get too much in personal. But and she's and again, maybe you didn't hear my disclaimer. She doesn't have to answer yeah. if she doesn't want to. If you just listen, this wouldn't be <laughs> oh, a Oh, ass ass brothers that. fucking teaming fucking up. Fucking triple. Gotcha. Jesus Christ. <laughs> All right. <laughs> again, again, Dean. You do not yes. have to disclose any financial yeah. information if uncomfortable. What Howie is, is a goddamn professional, and he's trying to decide if it's best for you to open up a personal or a business IRA. That's yeah, I make about four. If you combine my sex panther and my OnlyFans, I'm, I'm, I, hit, I hit a couple thousand. Hold on. Okay. What is a sex panther? Oh, sex panther is also online. It's, um, they give you a fake phone number and men can text you. And usually you make like 60 cents a message, two fifty for a picture message and $5 for a one minute video. So you're, you're in your, you're making about a, a G a week, right? We'd say about yeah. a G a week. Well, That's tonight I made about $500. <laughs> I made about $500 today on sex panther. It's it. I love it. I love dirty talk. Hey, 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 you text me right now. You'll make $500 okay, okay, in the okay. next five minutes this on this show. Everybody, Dean, this is, I, we're, I we'll deal with that stuff later. Let's just talk no, about, I, I want, want the get sex panther text right now. Okay, I dude, sex we'll get the sex panther. Sign up. We'll include our sex panther thing into the description. Oh Let's just fuck. get to Dean, the if event. somebody offers you a chance to make money, what do you say? You always take it, right? Yes. Multitask. What's that uh, sex panther hotline number? Because you're about to make some money now. Um, my it's um one word E L L I E Bean Ellie Bean because right. that's my nickname. At sex panther. <laughs> you can call up. This is Chris, the best episode. Up, I, I got it. And you can buy a fucking sweater. It's amazing. Okay, All right. So Howie, she's at <laughs> she's about four to five grand a, a right. month, but. You know, m mostly just, uh, we'll say a G a week. So, Bean, here's what you want to do. And this is so vital. This is important. It's going to make you a millionaire. All you got to do is go to your local uh, Charles Schwab, Fidelity, E-Trade, America, even your own bank. You can go to your own bank and walk in and you say, I'd like to open up a Roth IRA. A Roth, Roth. IRA. Then you're writing this you down, do. Bean. You got to be writing this down. Or you can go back and listen. This is key. This is so hey, important. Sam. Sam, it's going to be played and she can rewatch it. She doesn't have to write anything down right now. So, so you want to. He's got my back. Right? I love that. I'm here for you. I'm here for you, but I do want a desk count on that sex. sex <laughs> shit for this, all right. So, listen, okay. So, so real quick though, I wouldn't go to a bank because I've been finding out that banks have just some, it's hilarious that they have some issues with adult film stars which is hilarious because banks have been fucking people forever and they seem to have a problem with this shit. So would you say, Howie, yeah, would go you to, say it would be better go to E-Trade or one yes. of those places? Go to Charles Schwab. If, and I'm sure wherever you live, there is one. Uh, go to a Charles Schwab and E-Trade, Ameritrade. Uh, you can even do it online. Open up a Roth IRA, a Roth IRA. And what you want to do is you want to start contributing you can contribute a, a weekly, monthly basis. You're allowed to put up to 60, I think it's $6,000. Okay, that goes in uh, per year annually. And when you're 59 and a half, if you want to take it out for retirement, you take it out tax-free. You pay no taxes on it. But yeah. if you put that into a few different mutual funds and you just keep funding that thing every single year, you'll have a couple million dollars in there someday. Right now, That's the perfect. flip is, Bean, 
If you want the tax deduction, you go with the traditional IRA. So yeah, but at her age, at her age, she doesn't. She, not at not at oh, four oh, grand oh. a month. She never said how old she was. I'm just giving. Yeah, her how old do you here. think I am? Oh, I'd shit. say you're in your twenties. Twenty three. I'm gonna say twenty two. Twenty four. Twenty five. Twenty six. Twenty nine. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. 28. She's going to go to yeah. Charles Schwab. Is she going to, she's going to call Charles Schwab or she goes yep. on the internet? She's going you to can do these either. People, but these people are there to open up accounts. Okay. Yeah. They want your business. They're going to walk you through everything. Yeah. But the point is you are not making any money putting it in the bank. We were having this conversation before you came on. In the old days, we used to make interest in banking, you know, mm -hmm. and that, that stopped and it doesn't exist anymore. So when you put your money into, into a bank, you're going to get, probably 0.06% interest a year. The goal is to get you making anywhere from seven to 12% a year and then compounding that year yeah. after year. That's the compound ticket, interest. it's magic. Compounding interest is total magic, it's yeah, amazing. I, who was it that said compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world? It's somebody. Uh, I, I think I said that. Yeah, you didn't say that, Sam. <laughs> I, Einstein did, because you know? he's a fucking genius. You're a G. Okay, which is yeah. one six of a genius, but you're not a genius. <laughs> Respect. So Respect. the point is, <laughs> you need to get that money into a place where it's earning interest and earning interest on top of interest. That's so, the so, so okay. she, like what little, like how little should she put in, let's say at first, if she could, like the, she a couple should be hundred bucks at first? Well, yeah. what you should do is if you have a pile of money, you should contribute the max, which is $5,500. That's the minimum you should be contributing if like you've got 30, 50, you know, 50 grand in the bank. If, you know, if you're not going to miss it. Because On a podcast. Oh, he, I actually am. Really? Yeah. yeah. So For real. <laughs> no, it's okay. Love you. Good night. Um, Good night. So, Sorry, uh, I'm in sober living, so I, hey, we get checked great. on. <laughs> we, we, uh, we're all sober here as well, too. So that's great. Cool. Enjoy it. Most of us, except for <laughs> Will E. We got two months. There. You got Keep two great. months? Yeah. yeah. Nice. 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 Hey, thank that's you. Cool. That's Keep great. Going. This is a place of love. You know, progress, not perfection. Um, no. so, so I don't know how much you've been banking uh, or how much you have in, but would you be comfortable putting a little bit into an IRA <laughs> down the line? Yeah. Like just go to Charles Schwab and like say, Hey, here's three grand. Do something with this. No, don't say do something with it. Cause they'll put you okay. into something that'll, they'll put you into an annuity and charge you 12%. Walk in and say, okay. I need to open a Roth IRA. It's something Roth I need IRA. to do. Yes. I need to do it right now. I want to put in three grand, three grand. Can you show me some funds and what they've done the past couple of years? I'd like to make eight, nine, 10% a year. And they'll do that for you. They'll put you in a couple of good mutual funds. And uh, all you do is just, you can put money every month, every two months, three months, whatever, max it out okay. to 500 a year. And, and, how, and, you know, someday you're going to look at that. You're going to have hundreds of thousands of dollars in it. So it's vital. It's so important you do that. Definitely. Yeah, and, and you okay. probably... We were also talking about this earlier. Let's say you get into a place in five or six years or even next year because you start crushing it on the Sex Panther and the, the OnlyFans <laughs> and you've got a pile of money and you want to buy a house. Well, you can borrow 10000 against your IRA with no penalty to put that towards a down payment on, yep. you know, on a new fuck pad. Yeah. Oh, yay. You know, and you, Love a good fuck, fuck, fuck pad. pad. Okay. All right. Guys. I knew this was going to, it was a matter of time. So, so, so these, this, now here's the thing, right? This is just stuff you're meant to, it's like you want to store yourself in a, a savings account. It's yeah. your money's not working for you. You want to get to a place where that's the, you, where your money works for you. And that to me is the difference between the demographics that have, generational money and those that don't because like okay. you're like me I'm, i mean i'm much older than you but i was just taking my money and putting it in a savings account and it was doing nothing 
It would just sit in there and then eventually I'd start selling it. And I, I mean, using it on whatever I was going to buy, you know, whether it's sneakers or cars, there's these things that you're going to buy that depreciate in value. So they're really a waste of an investment. Everybody needs sneakers. Everybody needs a car. But like when people start investing so much into those she things. Leaves, she lives in New York. She doesn't need a car, dude. Okay. I mean, well, the point is, is like. I live in Ohio. Oh, I yeah. thought we were in New York. I'm sorry. Sam said it was Sam's. <laughs> Oh, he said Eastern time, and I have it. Dude, oh, you, you screwed Chris all up with that sex panther shit. He said a fucking yeah. different This guy is shish kebab. This guy hey, shish kebab. So, right. hey, I've been texting with her for the last 15 minutes, and I've already blown 80 bucks, and it's been the best time of my life. That's not okay. the only thing you've blown, kid. You're just going to make you're gonna make enough for your fucking your Roth IRA just from the sex panthers from these two guys fucking yeah. phone call. <laughs> uh, so, so I, I, do you want to get into stocks with her? I mean, like... Now, here's what I would say. Well, no, no, time out, because we, we don't want to overwhelm anybody that just, you know, is being told, you know, here's your starting point. The point is, this is your base, okay? This is, you know, this is your breakfast, you know, an IRA, something that you're going to put away, you, you know, in, in your heart, your brain, you're not going to touch it until you're 59 and a half. And once you get there, there's going to be a lot of money. Now, once you start getting that serial killer Richard Ramirez only fans cash on the side and you're like, I got a little extra. That's when we start saying, all right, well, let's put you in a little more of aggressive moves with some stocks. But the first thing you need to do is get your base. Okay. Yeah. We'll get, here's what we do. We, we gave B an assignment. She's going to check. Oh, back. I have month. one more thing I want to say to her before we start. I Bean, I want you to start taking a little bit of your money you're making and start buying Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Okay. okay. Bitcoin. You go on your phone. Okay. I can just Next. do that through Cash App, right? Because yeah. I'm pretty sure. No, Cash no, no. App you're not going to do Cash App. Fuck Good. Cash you, App. Okay. You're going to okay. download Coinbase. Okay. Coinbase. And now Coinbase isn't perfect, but it's the best starter place to start buying digital currency. Okay. You're going to take, now listen, you're going to go on there. You're going to be like, Oh my God, Bitcoin's $57,000. I can't afford that. You're not meant to, you don't have to buy a whole one. This thing by the end of the year, they're saying it could be worth $200,000. So what you want to do is buy a little anytime you have some scratch. You want to put it in your IRA, but you want to buy Bitcoin. Bitcoin is the sun that all these other digital coins go around, okay? And okay. down the line, we'll have you back. We'll talk about all the other coins. But for right now, you want to take some of this, you know, magic action that okay. you're taking and put a little bit into Bitcoin, okay? Okay. Whether it's $50. If you, let's say some dude's going long on this road and you're like, damn, this dude just rocked 500 bucks, right? Right. Take He's on a blue of that. He keeps nutting and I can't. He's just a blue chew superstar, right? <laughs> and he's just going for it. He's on a hard coke run. You hear the coke birds in the back going, get off the phone. Get <laughs> off the phone. He's like, I'm going the distance with Pete. I'm setting high scores here. You're going to take like 100, 200 of that and put it in to Bitcoin. I would say put 10% of what you're making into that. The key is being, and these guys might disagree with me, is you're not, again, you're not going to have to wait till 59 like you are with your IRA, but you're going to hold on to this Bitcoin for a little while. What we're investing in right now is like for this thing to explode. So Bean goes from having $5,000 in Bitcoin over town to this thing exploding to 20, 50, $100,000, which right. is in play. Bean, here's what you need to know. Okay. Here's what you need That's to cool. know. Once you put that money into an IRA, it's no longer liquid, meaning you don't have access to take it out unless, the, you know, there's a penalty. Um, I, I, Howie, is that correct on Ross? Yeah, yeah, of course. So the so, point is. <laughs> of course okay? I'm right. <laughs> yeah. No, I was just thinking about penalties, Ross versus traditional. The point is, if you put that, put, you know, a little extra in Bitcoin, that's very liquid, meaning if you need to pull the money out, you can sell that Bitcoin and transfer it to cash. So it's important to remember you're talking about two very different things here. You're talking about something that's super liquid, not quite cash, which is ultra liquid, 
versus an IRA, which is a long-term investment, which you need to put in and pretend like it doesn't exist. Okay. So a little bit of money. Thing. You're going to look at your bank account. You're like, oh man, where's all my money? Listen, there's- But it's working. Like hit okay. it, quit it, and then come back and hit it again every once in a while. Just but hit don't- it, but don't ever quit it. Just keep hitting it. Don't ever Just quit it, but it. you can't like call it yeah. in between. This is not Got one it. night stand stuff. This is hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it. Keep hit hitting it. it. Now- so I'm good at the that. whole theory is that the whole theory is that, you know, without getting too much into it, the federal, the Fed, and you could learn about the Fed and you probably are do know about the Fed just starts printing money. It's called fractional reserve banking. And what's yeah. going to happen is they're going to print so much money that the, that the U.S. dollar could collapse. OK, so when you have a mo- so when you invest in Bitcoin, you're actually protecting yourself from that so most people want to be like oh dude i need i only had twelve thousand dollars in my 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 account you want to keep enough to cover your bills yeah and then you want to take the rest and invest it into your ira and your bitcoin because those things are gonna those things are gonna keep working for you to make money the money you keep in the bank should only be there to cover your enough to cover your bills okay Okay. So cool. yeah, she could be, be, you could check back with us in a month and she'll be like, yeah, I got an IRA. I got a few grand in there. It's starting to grow. You'll be on your way. Listen, right. Maureen, you're a cash daddy superstar. You're the first female ever on the show. You're like, the, you're Yay. like yeah, you're like the Rosa Parks of this whole thing. So congratulations on that. You're historic. And uh, <laughs> great. So thanks for coming on. I'm sure you're going to get to know at least one of these guys' voices uh, <laughs> very soon. So don't worry about that. One more time, tell them where they can find you. Okay, my Twitter handle and my OnlyFans is what she eat, no Z or S at the end. <laughs> and then my sexed panther is Ellie Bean. So come talk to me. I'm a pretty good time. <laughs> Any more questions? Anything at all? No, I'm still trying to comprehend what you guys all said. Well, all the right, good thing so- is it's going to be released and you can watch it as many times as you like. And, you and I will need to do that. Up, and you can DM us. Uh, you can slip yeah. into our DMs and on Cash Daddies and ask us any questions you want. We will be as professional as possible. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> okay. All right, Bean. Thank you so much for coming on. Yeah. Sorry about thanks the mistake for having earlier. me. This was that great. Was cool. Thanks and we're going to get on, that. Bean. What are we getting together there, Chris? The OnlyFans. Hedge fund. Hedge fund. Oh, uh, yo, yeah, the Cash Daddy's hedge fund. Uh, the Cash Daddy's only fun, uh, only fans hedge fund. All right, we're gonna <laughs> do it. Thank you, Bean. You're the best. Yeah. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me, guys. Take Have a good care. night. Bye. That was great. Yeah, I, I thought that have, went great. I shouldn't have said fuck pad, but it was pretty good. Yeah, it's okay, dude. I mean, dude, we we are cavemen, and we're not coming. And that was as professional as I think it would ever get. Okay, so uh, nope. I know we're running long here, so let's get into our picks for the week. Who wants to go first? Um, I'll go first. I'll okay. go first. Oh shit! Um, Young G, little E. Break out your pens. It. Break out your pens. I'm doubling down. I said this on uh, what was it Thursday's pod? LGHL. We have Yvonne popping off, ZKIN popping off. Um, Can you show these on screen so they can see it? Yeah, yeah. And it's another crypto play. Um, They produce software that uh, mines Bitcoins and other cryptos. And, I mean, Bitcoin's going nuclear right now. So I think it has a lot of potential. And it's up past five days. It's only 540. I've got a couple shares in it. Um, you know, 25, 30, maybe I'm not sure on the exact number, but, uh, this is the main one I'm going on and I'm staying on OCGN, APHA, um, and a few other ones, but I'm just testing the waters there. All right. All right. Howie, go ahead. Yeah, man. I'm, uh, I'll tell you what, uh, I'm still sticking with my FSR, uh, still sticking with, uh, DSX, which is still up big. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to throw the one that Chris and I bought options on last week. Uh, D M N X. Is that correct, Chris? No, it's not even close. D N M R. Jesus Christ. I, th- I threw in the you X. Really want? Was it DMX? Is that what you're buying no, into? DMX. That's what I'm thinking in my head. I'm thinking D M N R. D M N R. 
Yep. Uh, it's it's basically a bioplastics company out of Georgia. Uh, the stock was at like 62. I've been watching this thing for three weeks. I haven't talked about it. It's gone from 62 down to 50. It hit 44 last week. That's when I talked to Chris about it. We bought calls. It jumped to 50 in about 30 minutes on Friday while we had the calls and we got rid of them. I like this stock. Uh, they're making what they're doing. It's basically an alternative to plastics. It's a uh, bioplastics. Um, the company, the bottom line is I'll make it short. I think the thing's going to jump to 63, $64 here over the next few months. I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, it, the chart, it reads straight. It's got real solid base right around, uh, 44, 45 resistance. I mean, support and, uh, resistance up above 66. So I like it a lot. I think it can go back up to 64, 65 the next, uh, next few months. So that's my stock. All right, Sam. Uh, uh, I would like to. Uh, I'm going to get into uh, my cryptocurrency, obviously. And Lily had suggested something earlier that we were on the tech thread, so I want to get into that. So, so my pick of the week for for um, crypto is the thing I sent to you guys earlier. It's down a little bit right now, but it's called. Uh, Polygon, P-O-L-Y-G-O-N, and you can buy it on crypto.com wallet. You what and, is that? What do you? That's fixident for denture shit. That's a, that's a real fucking crypto. Polygon, P-O-L-Y-G-O-N. Okay. Yes, Polygon. and and the reason I like this one is because. Uh, they say that they have fixed the high gas fees with uh, Ethereum, because Ethereum, right. if you if you sell it, the trans the gas fee is the transaction to put the transaction on the blockchain, and with Ethereum, it's much more expensive. So it's down a little bit, but this is they just came out and said they fi- they believe they fixed the gas. Be a problem and so i think that's going to be a big player and then i wanted e could you talk a little bit about that crypto you were talking about earlier i know the company it wasn't necessarily the crypto that you were pushing but what they did and they do in fact make crypto yeah so uh it's basically just like a it's it's called an nft which is a non-fungible token um so it means that like one token is not equal to another token. Like my dollar in my pocket and the dollar in Sam's pocket equal one another, but each of these tokens equal something different. So from what I've gathered, I, I, I've done uh, not as much research as I would, I would like to do is that you make art or you make collectible items, uh, trading cards, something like of one offs. There's a, they're, they're ones. They're one of ones, essentially, is what they are NFTs. It's it's basically like virtual trading cards, like uh, Derek Jeter trading card or whatever. Um, and the more rare it is, the more expensive it gets. So some, just as an example, some person made an image of a cat. And I don't know if this is just art or if you can transfer it into game or something. Somebody paid $175,000 for this image of a cat in oh, Ethereum. Shit. Can you show that real quick, that, that website that you were talking about and, and the crypto? Real quick, uh, I forgot to say also that our, our, I know that our Reddit, and I believe was done by our friend Zoltan, who does uh, also did our logos and stuff. So shout out to Zoltan. And, you know, when I'm hearing about these one-offs of art, I think Zoltan, who I know listens to the show, should look into this because he does some awesome artwork and it's yeah. probably something he can make a little money off of. And just to be clear, Sam, tell people where they can buy these coins, because these coins aren't just available on Coinbase. Okay, well, you know, I like I said, it's on crypto.com, the one that I gave. And then again, it went down a little bit, but Monero's been going up. I told you the drug dealer's coin has been going up. If you can find where to buy it, you might have to buy Ethereum on Coinbase, transfer it to your Edge wallet, and then buy, then then basically buy 
uh, 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 Monero there, but I'm liking it. I got a, lot a of bunch of Monero. Crypto, Sam, a lot of people are asking you directly about XRP and why they should or shouldn't buy it. Well, I, I've said before, my belief in XRP is it is the banker's coin, which goes against what Bitcoin is about. <laughs> but my whole theory is, is that they're, they're, the bankers are trying to get in on this this digital stuff and they're, they supposedly just found an, uh, an actual application of the coin, which is a really big thing because Doge coin doesn't have any. Doge coin is just a coin that you smash and grab all the time. So they've, they've been working on a way to make it actual applicable to business. And so that's why I think it is, it could, you could see it explode. Now, the problem is they've made a billion of them. So I don't know how big it will get. And that's why Monero is very interesting. They've even made less Monero than they've made of Bitcoin. So the, this is what you got to look into. When I look into what coin I'm interested in buying, I go, how many have they made? What is their practical use? Is it, how specific is it? If it's super specific, I go, why would anyone get want to get this? But if it's like, it's, it's specific and it's, it's purpose, but general meaning that anybody can use the here, here, and here, and there. I think those are good buys. That's my opinion. So you're asking me, what are the the wallets I use? I buy a lot of my stuff on Coinbase, okay? For some reason, Coinbase is the one wallet that the banks will allow you to buy crypto with. Don't know why, probably by the shady. Way, by the way, recently uh, estimated worth $77 billion alone. Coinbase. Yeah, yeah, another IPO that Howie will only be allowed to get into. Then there will be a <laughs> Edge Wallet as well. Edge Wallet, that's where I got my Monero. One of the few wallets that will allow you to have Monero. It's there. My Crypto.com wallet, and I have a couple coins in there. I have Crypto.com coin. I have Polygon. I have Rave coin that was killing it earlier. Now it's gone down a little and this Golem network, which was cooking with a lot of gas. I just bought a big chunk of this one coin that just went up a dollar in a week, which was um, Ren. I bought that. I liked it's applicable. It's down again a little bit. But again, I don't buy these to smash and grab. These are things that I buy to I'm going to have them for a year, two years, because I think they could explode based on their practical use. So, I have, oh, here, look it up. Look it up. Yeah, I found, I found the, uh, the cat. So somebody bought this for $172,000, and apparently. Ooh, that's pretty. Yeah, apparently it's, a, it's like a, <laughs> a, a, a video game cat. So it's like if, if – uh, how he was to go out and buy a golden retriever tomorrow. He's getting top of the line. He can breed that golden retriever. Um, he, he knows oh, the eye colors. Too. It's a she. Yeah. So, I, again, I, I, I don't really fully understand. What, I cannot wrap my fucking head around <laughs> what you're telling me right now. I, this I, is I, the <laughs> most fucking god-awful thing. <laughs> Adapt I mean, or Howie, die! Adapt Howie. or die, Howie. Howie, what it is is it's a non-fungible token. It is basically a piece of art. There's only one of them that exists in the world. So you're selling scarcity to these fucking nerds, all right? Yeah, scarcity. Who's it? This is like Banksy's cousin fucking came out and drew. Hey, up. that's next, man. That's coming down the pipe. But I just looked the at language. a fucking okay. What I'm looking at right now is a, a drawing that would take any dropout flunky ten minutes to do that is now worth 172 thousand. Yeah, you yeah. don't understand art. <laughs> Holy All right, what are your shit. picks real quick, Neff? What are you, not uh, real quick, but give it to him. Yeah, you're right, because there are a couple things I do uh, want to address. We've been getting a lot of um, contest questions, and the official sign-up for um, the Little Johnny Rockfuck Cash Daddy's Green Donkey Dildo Trading Challenge is through the cashdaddiespodgmail.com email. So you have to sign up there. And we're getting a lot of people that want to be involved and they keep saying things like a G might be too much, maybe 500. Um, so what we're going to probably do is put up a poll sometime this week. 
to gauge the interest to see what everybody can afford to get into the challenge. Um, so we'll do that at some point later this week. Again, the challenge is not going to start anytime soon, probably a month or two out. So there's no rush on that. And thanks to Matt C, we will have trophies for the winners. Um, he's working, he's a brilliant glass blower. He's working on a, uh, a juice, a, go, uh, a juice chalice that the winner will be able to drink out of. And then I want to make sure we agree uh, the loser uh, what he has in store here is to design a, a green uh, donkey dildo necklace that the loser, meaning one of four of us, would have to wear around their neck for a year. And a year? I'm, yeah. No. A dildo <laughs> you... around our neck for a year? <laughs> it's not Dude, a I live, in, I, live in the, bro. I live in the West Village. Are you out of your fucking mind? <laughs> oh, no, not a year. <laughs> Dude, what do you do? Like, you don't leave the house. What are you I'm talking about? I'm the stakes is what I'm doing. I'm not. Okay? Uh, Evan could do it for a year. I mean, I don't know what weird <laughs> shit he's in, but I'm not doing it for a year. I'll do it for like a day. I'll walk around with a dildo or. No, no, time, or out. time out. This is art, okay? This guy's talented. This is going to be a, a glass blown donkey dildo. It's not going to be like a yeah, fucking... Yeah, I don't care if it's a fucking unicorn dildo. I'm not walking around for a year <laughs> around my neck. Okay, I think we should at least see what he's proposing. Before no, we... executor. Ex I don't mind wearing it for a day. Day. <laughs> two days. A year? What are you Not even two about? days. You really One are day. an ass to ass One day. bottom. <laughs> day. We'll put it in the poll. We'll let, let the readers decide how long uh, the loser I have executive this. Everybody but Sam. I'm not walking around with a hand blown donkey dildo <laughs> around my neck. It's, hold where on. I, hey, this. hey. Where I live in the West Village, I would walk from, I'd get off the one train and walk home and that thing would be up my ass in 3.2 yeah, seconds. Yeah, you walk guys, off the train no and then get guys, trained. Guys, this yeah. isn't, time out. This isn't like a Flavor Flav life-size <laughs> dildo, okay? It's going to be classy, small. Maybe we'll do it a choker style so it's tight. Oh, yeah, that, <laughs> okay. That's great. That's great. <laughs> Maybe, and keep in mind. Hey, Nat. Why yeah. did you just start making executive disorder? The executive <laughs> orders. Or <laughs> dis executive disorder. You know what? Why did you just start doing that? Somebody has to run the fucking ship around here, man. I get it, but that's a big <laughs> thing that we didn't vote on. And I'm voting <laughs> no to a year of donkey dildos around my neck. A yeah. year, dude. It's not Three just episodes. the dildo. The I have a daughters. I have daughters. I'm not walking around with donkey dildos around. <laughs> My it's kids. not just the donkey's dildo. The donkey's going to be there too. And there'll, so there'll be a little, there'll be a. Oh, okay. Anyways, let's move on. Right. Did you do your picks? No. Buddy. Do your I'll picks. Do pick. I got to go. Okay. Just for a little clarification, um, I still am holding USAT, which I told you guys I got into um, in December. Not a, not a fancy play, it's a vending machine um, uh, play. And somebody actually said, uh, hey, just so you know, there's already somebody that does that called Cantaloupe. I know you sat bought them. Okay. So don't come at me thinking I don't know <laughs> what I'm pitching. Okay. So if you want to like get after me for not doing my due diligence, you better come hard. Okay. And you better have facts to back them up. That's point number one. So queenie, dude. So queenie. <laughs> point number two. Uh, I did add to my existing position of AccuF, which is Acuity Ads, which I'm already up 300% on since November. Um, I think uh, we're going to see an imminent uh, NASDAQ listing, which is going to push that stock even higher. And then KLDO, which hasn't had a whole lot of momentum. I'm still, um, st still hot on that. I think there's plenty of room, room to move. And then, if you don't mind, Lil E, can you bring up my pick of the week? Ticker is KLR. Sam, this is where you want to pay attention so I don't have to do this again in a week and then roll the tape. Okay? E, e, pull up, pull up a weekly chart, a weekly. Okay. So let me explain to you what this company okay. does. This is an Italian company. I don't even know how to pronounce it. it might be Calera or Calira. 
But what this company does, um, okay, you guys know like when you get locked out of your password on Netflix? Yeah. And, you know, they send you a text? Yeah. Okay, it's called cloud communication. One of the largest cloud communication companies is called Twilio, and they're just crushing it. Um, I think the, the idea here and why I'm so attracted to this Calera is they don't have nearly the market share that Twilio does, but they're trading at a valuation five times less than Twilio. And they're emerging, they're, they're moving into the US market, they're grabbing market share in the US. So I think a straight value play on this stock um, is, gonna, is gonna push it up significantly in the next year. Um, my, my target on it right now is $30. So what's it trading at right now? 16.93. Okay, so my target's 30 bucks, somewhere around maybe 35. So Sam, this is the portion of the show when I say, hey, do you wanna make some money? And you say what? Hell yeah. Okay, so what are you gonna buy? I'm gonna buy Krillio. <laughs> I like the way you just made a portmanteau out of Twilio <laughs> and Kalira. I'm gonna buy Krill 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 Krans, Krill 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 Krans, baby. Kalira. I'm gonna okay, make Kalira. So are, you, are you going Lamedia. to buy KLR? I am. Okay, maybe. one thing I want to explain to people is uh, we do get a lot of pressure to say, hey, this information isn't good to me, bro, if you're releasing on it Monday. Well, I didn't release it money, uh, Monday. or we're not, I released this information on Twitter last week on Friday when I bought it. So the point is, if you're paying attention to the Twitter, that's where you're always going to get our immediate buys during the week. Um, I, I can't do it in the Discord. I can't do it in Reddit, but I can always tweet them. So the smart readers, which I guarantee there are plenty full of, They've already bought this, Sam. So you're already a step behind. So what do you do? Do you wait till market? Sometimes you have to, but it's very important to realize if you want to make a buy on something. How many shares should I buy? It depends. Are you a G? <laughs> Are you a Are G? Are you a G? I'm Answer a G, G dude. Okay. Of course I'm a G. But okay. do I have to watch this thing all the time? Or are you just gonna tell me when to sell? I'd be like- No, no. Here's the thing. You're just going to buy it. Okay. And just I just hold said, it? I said it's got a $30 price target. What does that mean when somebody gives you a target? Does that mean tomorrow? No. Well, how long does I it wait mean? Wait till it hits 30, then I sell no, no, it? No, 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 no. How long does it mean when somebody says they have a price target? 47 days. Not even close. <laughs> how it? A year, 365 days. Right. So, Damn, that's what I'm all about, dude. Okay. I'm going to buy some. We are not going to give you smash and grabs to buy on this show. We realize uh, that's not going to fit your personality or more importantly, your lifestyle. My, okay? yeah, my smash and grab days are done. Okay. okay. That was, uh, that was the 2000. Okay. Trip so smashing and grabbing people. are so, thinking <laughs> Again, I don't know how many Bitcoins you have and it's God's own private mystery. And there's a lot of chat. There's some rumors going around about what the, the, the fans and readers think that number is. They think it could vary anywhere between three to eight coins. So we don't, I'm not asking you because it's none of my business, but I will say this. If I was rolling with eight Bitcoins worth a half a million dollars, I'd probably put a couple G's into KLR. How many G's? Are you closer to the eight Bitcoin or closer to the three? Bitcoin? I am not getting into that. You, you put in whatever you're comfortable with. But like, the what point are we is, talking? Give me a number. I mean, here's the thing. I never buy a hundred shares. Jesus Christ, buy a hundred shares. Thanks, buy a hundred shares. Done. That's okay. a lot. Buy a lot. Okay. Can you time stamp this, Lily? Yep. I'll okay. buy it right you, now. No, you can't. Now, here's the thing. What I wanted to explain to you. Oh, because your old man shit doesn't trade all the time? Like my crypto shit? Here's the thing. Howie, can you explain to Sam what it means to trade and buy after hours or before market? Yeah, man. Monday through Friday, they give you a couple hours after to put your buy or sell in. I don't like doing it because the volume drops substantially. And you don't, you don't always get in at the price that you want to get in. But you can do it. You can buy after hours. 
Um, uh, uh, so tomorrow the- morning I wake up, I go, I'm going to get that clip, clip, clap, clap, and I'm going to buy it a hundred, a hundred shares. If you yeah. want to buy it pre-market, you get up at 4 a.m. our time. Okay. Um, Don't, okay. I'd wait, 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 wait during the day, man. The point All is, right. when I get up, because you don't get up, Chris, because you sleepy in, because you're sleeper. What are you talking sleeper. about? I'm up at the bell every day. <laughs> I'm up the, You think I could just come up with this fucking, this, yeah. all this shit? He's got to feed those cats. In? That's fucking it. He's got to pour a meow mix all over the floor, All right, guys, man. I got to go. Tomorrow's going to be victories for all of us. Yeah, we're all, all right. winning. Everybody Great winning. show today. Everybody yeah. crushed it. The ass to ass brothers are on fire. What's your social media, Chris? Chris Neff comedy. Okay, Chris, why you sound so sad? Because you can give Lily a chance to do our fucking walkthrough and make sure everybody knows what they got to subscribe to and shit. What? <laughs> I know you got to We did that at the beginning. We did that at the beginning. Well, we and what do you beginning. always do? What do you always do when you leave? You remind people. Subscribe. Okay, Howie Dewey, where can they find you? Howie Dewey Instagram, Howie Dewey, or Howie bottom underscore bottom Dewey feet. Twitter. Bottom, bottom underscore. Bottom. <laughs> Howie Dewey, just fucking Howie Dewey. You'll find me. Uh, uh, listen, guys, all this information is always in the description, okay? Always in the description. Click the links, find it. Lil E, where do you want to go? Uh, find me, Evan underscore hand. Uh, subscribe to the Cash Daddy's YouTube Discord links in the description. Reddit links in the des- in description. All the links are in the description. Just All go follow. Links, and the iTunes reviews help us out tremendously. And yeah. review, go text review. Bella. <laughs> go, uh, Ronan Sam Tripoli on Twitter. Sam Tripoli everywhere else. Sam Tripoli.com is on fire. It's coming. And guys, thank you so much. Uh, the show, just the, the, the feedback has been one, so positive and we're glad it's helping people. So thank you guys for a great show. Love you guys. And we'll see you in the next Cash Daddies is for entertainment purposes only. You'd be an idiot.